Hello, everyone, and welcome to this one-on-one -on -one conversation with candidate Gordon Jameson. Gordon is a candidate for the uh, Board of Assessors here in town. Gordon, thanks for joining us. We want to get right into the conversation. Um, first thing uh, is that you uh, and uh, Mr. Toshjan, Errol Toshjan, both present yourselves clearly, I think, as agents for change. You both see that change is needed on uh, the Board of Assessors. And um, I'm wondering, and I think perhaps our audience is as well, first off, are you guys both looking for change and that's the end of the story? Or is there something that distinguishes what you're looking to do on the board uh, versus what you understand is the case for Mr. Toshjohn? Okay, so uh, yes, I think change is in order. Um, uh, his background, as I understand it, is tax counting. Um, that's different than mine. Um, I'm more interested in, in, in understanding um, the process um, that drives uh, our assessed values. Um, if you look at the, um, the database, which Mr. Tierney, the Director of Assessments, kindly provided me, um, and, and, and sort it by different parameters, you find things that pop up pretty quickly that make you question why um, values are what they are in, in the process. There's a variety of categories that I mentioned in my profile, uh, be it square footage or condition or grade, and it's not really clear um, what an A versus a B versus a C means. And I think in, from my past discussions with the board during an abatement process when I first moved to town, similar to Mr. Um, the other candidate, um, that uh, they're somewhat, um, you don't really know why, why, why those parameters are what they are. And I, 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 my sense is that these parameters have been around for eons. And that the one thing might be, that might be worth considering is just basically starting the thing over and coming up with parameters that more accurately um, re reflect the, um, the properties and buildings and uh, structures that we have in town. Um, Last year at town meeting, um, Mr. Tierney noted that while for many years they had just really, even though you get a single assessed value on your property plus structure, um, that they had really broken out the property value because as you probably know from your value and the people at home do, your land is worth more than your house in most cases. And so they, they, they've implemented that and that's why some of the um, assessed values um, have changed a lot in some parts of town because a buildable lot is a buildable lot. But I still see things like, in my case, um, I have filed for an abatement this year. Um, I did this that uh, about 12 years ago when I first, or 18 years ago when I first moved to town after a couple of years. Um, I don't know why my house has such a high square foot um, value finished on the street. It's higher than newly built properties right next to me. And it's 50% more than, than, a, than a property down the street that has the same square foot finished area. Those, those are outliers that, that shouldn't exist. And um, I, I'm just always confused by, that's a simple process to be able to find those and correct those. Um, and that's statistical analysis and the things I've mentioned. Um, in your candidate profile, I do remember you saying that you, among other things, you think that things, uh, that abatements really shouldn't be necessary as often as they are because, as you said, things should be done correctly the first time. Um, how achievable is that? Is that is that, you know, really just something that just requires certain changes and uh, and adjustments, um, and then it can be done? Or is there something inherent in the process which would mean, hey, even the best of uh, functioning uh, assessment boards or, or assessors are, are not gonna be able to achieve a 100% record there. Well, I, I, I agree, it's not almost impossible to be perfect. Um, I, I wonder, um, one of the parameters in the, in the database is the value of the last sale. Um, some of them are zero when there's no entry. Some of them are $1 because it's like a trust or something and some of them have a value. Now, if that's used in part of the value assessment process, that provides a, a large variability on, on the end product, I think. As I mentioned a second ago, um, you know, it doesn't take um, a lot of work to be able to um, scan the numbers 
and, and, and in the database based upon different parameters, be it square footage or be it the size of a property. And at the end, again, you see places in town where the value of a piece of land is twice the value of another part, part of town. Now I can see when I first moved to town, there might be um, some rationale for that. Uh, in that um, the, uh, um, not all the elementary schools had been rebuilt then. And, but they all have now. So the, the differential between different parts of town based upon that aspect, I think has been greatly reduced. So I would anticipate that the value of the properties um, given the sales in town um, should be more equitable across town. And those are types of things that you can look at just by sorting and scanning the database. Um, the other thing that's not really in the database, to my knowledge, it may be embedded in some code, is the neighborhoods. And the question is whether the, whether those neighborhoods are still the neighborhoods they should that, that they have been for old. Again, it's the um, ancestral uh, aspect of the database. It doesn't really change that much. Um, it's just the the inputs by someone who comes and looks at a property or the sales of properties. Um, the other candidate who um, who is in the race uh, is the, an, an incumbent, um, Mary Stanley <laughs> O'Connor. <laughs> who's been on the board for 19 years now. And she has uh, said that she has not seen uh, you at a board of assessors meeting. I'm wondering, have you in fact uh, attended any board of assessors? Meetings? No, I haven't attended those, but I do attend the tax hearing um, every year um, and uh, interact with um, the people there. Their meetings are not at a convenient time. They're um, early afternoon, midweek. Um, that's something else that I think should be considered is perhaps making those more on the 730 type thing. Maybe inconvenient for the uh, director of assessments, but Thursday nights are uh, a late night. So perhaps the meetings could be held in a more, a time where more people could attend. I think it's important for, and, and not have it held, I believe they're held within the, uh, the office of the director of assessments. I think a, a meeting room would be a better a forum for that. Um, in that the, co the 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 public might be more might feel more comfortable um, yes. or more welcome in that right. kind of environment. Is that what you mean? Yes. In, in other words, most of, all the other meetings, you know, the board of selectmen they have a hearing room. Um, the FinCom meets over in the public safety department. The school committee has a meeting room over in um, the high school. But all the other major um, things, and this I think is one of the important ones. It's why it's a townwide elected office they have their meetings um, in a forum that's, you know, it only has to be upstairs in the, the lion's hearing room, which is available um, next to the, to the board. It's just down the hall and upstairs from uh, the assessors. That would be something useful. To return to something that, uh, that, that uh, we started the conversation with, and that is this theme of, of change and necessary change within uh, yeah. the, the, uh, the assessor's office. Um, how much of what you would like to do there would be technological change? And if so, what form would that take? Well, um, I think part of it's perspective. You know, um, as I mentioned in my profile discussion, um, the forms are all, you know, you download them and they're not PDF billable. That's just a simple thing that can help people file things. Um, I, if we need to hire another person, there's a very capable man, gentleman who works with them, who does their data assessment. But if we need to hire another person to make sure we get things correct the first time, then then that's then we should just add that to the budget and request it from the town and justify it. Um, the other things that that I think are important are um, we haven't talked about that much yet, but is if I may bring it up, is new growth. Mm -hmm. And the fiscal resource task group, one of our members um, was looking at that um, in part from a property that he has, and I, I you know. Um, for those um, listening, new growth is a very important part to our financial stability going forward. And so when a neighbor, when you or your neighbor adds to your house or doesn't, uh, takes a cape and makes it a two-story house, um, those, um, the, that additional assessed value, it translates into additional tax dollars. And those should be borne by the person who's done the structure improvement. Um, what a member of our committee determined, and we're working with the town to try to understand this better, is it seems like somewhere between the inspection process, um, the, the, you pull a permit, you get inspections, 
And when those are done, it, to my understanding, it goes over a transom and then it goes to the board of assessors who also, th then also visit the property and then put the additional value on the card. And um, it, not in all cases, but we found some situations where it appears that, that that new growth is not being recognized and that needs to change because when you, if you were to, um, James, if you were to add on to your house, I expect you to pay the taxes on that. I certainly don't want to pay them. <laughs> and my neighbors don't either, or your neighbors. The other thing that I think is important is um, forums. Um, one second here, how are we doing? Um, I think more public forums that inform the, educate um, property owners about the process and, and provide the rationale and how each of these, these um, each of the, um, uh, data points, if you will, for each property uh, impact their um, property value would be really helpful. I mean, in other words, if someone can tell me, okay, that A, B, and C are the reasons that your house is assessed at such a high value compared to your neighbors, then I'm fine. But as I mentioned before, when someone with the same square footage down the street has half the assessed value for the structure part, not the land. The land sort of the land is, I think, an overall pretty good in a within a neighborhood in town. That that's something that needs to be addressed. And I think some uh, fresh eyes, um, whether or not either of us um, defeat Mary, and Mary's, I think, one of the best uh, members of the board. Um, I hope that uh, the board will seek serve um, be. Uh, see fit to listen to our ideas and consider implementing them. So win or lose, I hope to be able to implement change. Uh, so clearly, I, I'll just tell you that what I took from what you were just saying is that one of the, you know, one of the main changes you'd like to see or improvements you'd like to see would be in the area of transparency. I assume that that- Trans Transparency and internal uh, data QA, QC analysis. So that, and, and, uh, and just, I hate to say it like this, but just doing the work of making sure that all new, all changes in properties are, um, have a visit by someone from the office to, um, cause those are the, how the interim things are done. They aren't done by Patriot's properties, which is the contractor that they use. And while I'm on Patriot properties, um, I, I don't know whether they look at other people to do this. Maybe they have, maybe they're the only one really in town in the state that can do the work but it would seem worthwhile to at least consider and for, to present to the taxpayers in the town meeting why th this choice is made each and every year. Um, I always, you know, it's sort of like, I wouldn't call it a no bid contract, but it's sort of one of those things where they've been doing it the whole time and they've been doing okay, so we keep doing that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someone says that's a good way to not have things turn out so good sometimes. There's a quote on that somewhere. Well, as you were saying, fresh eyes might might be a, might might change the perspective there. We only have a minute left. Let me ask you: Are you in favor of considering a split rate? That being, you know, easing the burden on homeowners by setting a high, higher rate tax rate for commercial. yeah. Part of the presentations that we've done over the year um, to the the um, to the board. Um, well, it, it's a hearing is held by the um, select board and the Board of Assessors present the tax rate. And over the years, I've asked, and I and my committee members have inquired about that, and every year, the Board of Assessors says, no, 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 we shouldn't do that. Um, they did one year quote that, you know, well, if we could somehow tax the um, commercial apartments, okay, which are taxed in Massachusetts as residential property, then they might be okay with that. And so it turns out that um, by using residential exemption, and the split rate together, um, one can devise a situation where all of the resident resident owned properties are taxed at a slightly lower rate, but commercial and commercial investment apartments are commashed, are a slightly higher rate, mm -hmm. and and that would that would be um, it's you have to do two of them together. It's sort of complex, but it would work out the way where it would be able to slightly lower. The rates for mostly yeah. the people with lower I, valued. I am sorry. I am being told yeah. repeatedly that we are out of time. So and we'll see everybody at the at the ballot box on June sixth.
Okay, we'll have to end things there. I've been talking to Gordon Jameson, a candidate for uh, Board of Assessors here in town. I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, Jim.